Hi, welcome back to the Arcade Repair Tips video series. Today we're going to talk about a question that we've had several times mentioned uh, through our site, and that is how do I wire up the grounds to my control panel? And we're going to start off today with just a blank control panel. As you can see here, we got some push buttons, your start buttons, and a joystick. So our goal is, we're going to, there's two wires normally that go to every switch. We're going to show you how to run the ground wires. One of the first things we're going to talk about is daisy chaining. Now, if you have bought a really good jammer harness, it might come with some wiring like this. And what they've done is you have a, a, a point that you would be coming to to one of these, and then it connects into a terminal, and then another wire. So like the wire is just going from one point to the next to the next. That's what we're talking about, a chain or a daisy chain as it goes around. Well, here's the, here's the problem with that is if you have a cut in the wire down here, the two buttons in front of it may not work because they're part of that chain. And as that, wherever the break in the chain is, anything after that may not work. We've had questions before like, two of my buttons don't work, but everything else does. Maybe it's the last two buttons in the chain. So we're going to talk about what what it means and how to do a daisy chain. But before we talk about that, when we talk about a ground wire, there has to be a source. And just for illustration point here, I brought a JAMA wiring harness, which you guys probably recognize by now. The wires here have been cut, but it is labeled, and we're going to talk about you need to run a ground wire to your control panel, to a button, to a coin mech, wherever you want to go and run a ground where do you do that from? Well, it's pretty simple. At the ends of both ends of the JAMA harness, no matter if you're facing the part side or the solder side, what makes a difference is at the end, and uh, you guys have probably gotten a little bit familiar with the JAMA harness standard. If not, you need to watch our video on that. But they're the ground wires, these black wires in this case. You know, one common misconception that we have is that ground wires always have to be a certain color. Maybe they're usually red or green, but they can be white, they can be purple, they could be blue and polka dotted if this manufacturer decides to do that. But where it matters is the position of the harness that they're attached to. So at the end, this one happens to be black. So we can strip one of these wires, and I've already done that for you, and we can take a, um, a blank long black wire. You're going to need to make sure your wire is really long. You'd rather have too much wire and cut it off at the end than not enough and be short, especially when we're daisy chaining these. And you guys have seen us do this before, where we go in there and we solder that, we put heat shrink over it. You can make that look nice and pretty. We're going to leave that up to another video. Or, here's something maybe we haven't showed you. This is called a butt connector. And it's a cylinder here uh, with two empty ends and all you do is put one end here, crimp it down, put the other end in there and crimp it down. It makes a connection. A lot of people don't like to use these. I use them sometimes. It just makes things easy, especially if you're doing a repair on the fly or something like that. If you have the time, it really is better that you twist them, solder them and do all that stuff. But for the sake of today, we're just going to say that we're going to hook up here. Now you can run the ground from your harness or another ground, but it's usually better to do it from, straight from the harness, especially when you're going to the control panel, or you can run it straight from your power supply. You know that down at the bottom where your power comes in, you have a ground, that's your ground coming in. What we want is a ground going out, and that's usually up there by your 12 and your 5 volts. You'll see the GND, that stands for ground, and that's not earth ground. A lot of times uh, you'll see a little symbol, kind of looks like an upside down Christmas tree or a shovel or something. That is your earth ground. I think of it like a tree in the earth. And that's going in from the wall. That's your three, one of your three wires, usually green, coming from the wall plug. That's that one single thin uh, piece of, straight piece of metal that's on that three prongs. That's your earth ground, okay? Now, you don't want to run it to there. You can, but, it, but you really want to run it to one of these grounds 
or the GND, which is right near your 12, 5 or your 12 volts. All you have to do is hook one end up to there, and then we can come up to the control panel. Now, if you're going to hook it up to a standard or this type of power supply, there are kind of two different terminals that you can use, and it's really a matter of preference. One is this kind that has a round hole. You would put your wire up in there. You squeeze this on with your crimpers, like so. And then you would unscrew the screw and put it under there. I prefer the one that looks like a fork. You put it up in there. Then you squeeze it. And then you put the fork under here. The reason why I like the fork better is because all I have to do is unscrew this screw a little bit and I can pull this out. With the hole kind, you have to take the screw all the way out, stick it through the hole. So this is a little bit easier down the road if I want to change something up. I can just unscrew this a little and take that right out. Then just screw, put it in, unscrew it a little, then screw it down and it's in there. Okay. Well, like I said, if they send you this nice already daisy chained, it's pretty easy. Now the ground wire should go, there's three places it can hook up to, and we talked about this in previous videos. It needs to go to the one that's kind of out there by himself. Sesame Street, you know, one of the kids does not look like the other. This is this guy. And so what you want to do is pick a point of origin. Usually I like to start I'm just kind of anal about this, but it doesn't really matter. I usually start with the player one button. And so we'll start there, and you just basically slide that on, and then you go, this would be this one coming from your power supply, and then you go to the next one, you slide it on, and then it just keeps going around, putting that on, and there, then you jump over to the buttons, you make around there, and keep coming around till you get all these buttons till you get down to the end of the chain. As you guys can see, it's a continuous line with these connectors in the middle. Now these are called, uh, these are female terminals. You can see they got a slot there. They slide onto there. So you're going to need some of these. There's different kinds. Uh, some are yellow, some are blue, some are pink like this. We generally use the blue ones. What the only difference is what you got to watch out for is the width of the head, which depends on how wide. I got got kind of two examples here. If you can see this, this one is really wide, and that barely fits on there. In fact, I have to kind of force it on. This one is a little more narrow, and as you can see, this is a little more narrow, and it would fit that style switch. I recommend, this is just for demonstration purposes only, I'd recommend getting the same style switches and whatever terminal you need, whether wide, a little bit wider here, or more narrow like this one. There's just a little bit of difference there. Then on the other end is usually a color. It's usually blue or red or yellow, and that's the wire size. Now the wiring size that I like to use really works with this... Um, blue wire here and it's like a 16 to 20 gauge wire works pretty good for there a little the red is for a thinner wire i hardly ever use that on control panels i like using it that much period and then the yellow is for a much thicker wire which we normally don't use in control panels so most of the wiring coming off your jamma harness should use this blue type connector right there now what we're going to do is we're going to say though that all we have is the black wire coming up from our control panel. Just a one single long wire. So here we are with the wire coming from the JAMA harness or the power supply. It's going to go here. Now you're going to need another piece of wire. A pretty long piece of wire. The longer the better. It's better to have too much wire than too little. We're just going to use this one for demonstration purposes. So you got this wire coming in you need to tie it in with another wire here. So we're going to strip that wire. Strip the wire coming in. We'll twist them together. 
and then put one of our terminals on. And that will be the wire going to our player one. Okay, and this is still the wire coming from our JAMA harness or our power supply, whatever your preference is. Then you're going to have to jump over here to the player two, and you're going to make go about as far as the wire will go and add about two inches. You're always going to need a little bit of slack because we're going to strip it. Bend it right in the middle like that and cut it there. Then you're going to strip these two wires. Twist them together. Put a terminal on there. And squeeze it. Okay, now you got these two buttons hooked up. Now you can see we've daisy chained or came in with our wire going to our uh, power supply or the jammer harness. Jumper it over to here. Now we're going to take this wire. We're going to jump her over to here. We'll bend. We'll cut. We'll do the same thing. We'll run another wire and then over to the switches around there. That's what's called daisy chaining. This is how we would do it ourselves. Until you get down to the end, and then you'll just have one. You won't have two wires coming in like here. You'll just have a single wire. Okay, well we hope you've learned something, even by this just simple, real quick illustration. But, you know, that's why a lot of people say when this won't go down, or it, this button over here won't work, but these buttons do, because where the daisy chain starts, there may be a problem right here. Or when the wires are together, maybe they're loose or something. Or if nothing will work, maybe you don't have a good ground wire going to here all the way from your power supply. So it's a great way. In other words, if the grounds are not hooked up or hooked up to your control panel, you're going to have all the other wiring done and this still won't work. So if you're having your whole con panel, uh, control panel's not working, check your ground wires going back to your harness. Now if only certain buttons don't work, check to make sure that the chain doesn't have a break in it. Anyway, we hope that you learned something today and that this has been beneficial. Thanks again for watching Arcade Repair Tips video series, now in high depth.